Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 3J, where we're going to talk about diploids with homozygous phenotypes. So until now, in this module, we've been thinking about what proteins are and what proteins do. And in this and the subsequent lectures in this, the rest of this module, we're going to move forward to connecting what proteins do, ultimately organismal phenotypes, with the genotypes that underlie these. And so in this lecture, we're starting with thinking about homozygous phenotypes in diploid organisms. And we'll continue this in the next lecture. Then we'll think about heterozygous phenotypes and the complexities that this creates. So we're going to start with morning glory flowers. We thought about these already in the context of how gene regulation can change phenotype. Um, so the point of this slide is to tie this phenotype, the production of the blue pigment that makes the flowers blue, with a genotype. So the genotype of a homozygous plant that produces blue flowers is that it has two copies of the wild type allele, the functional allele, indicated by this superscript plus. So we write its genotype as W plus W plus. A white flowered morning glory has two copies of the defective allele. That's the allele with the frame shift insertion. And its genotype we write simply as W minus W minus, with the minus indicating this is a non-functional allele. We can certainly have more complex names if we want to distinguish more complex alleles, but for now we're simply distinguishing functional alleles from non-functional alleles. Now here's another morning glory example. You might know that morning glories actually come in a wide range of different colors, and here we're looking at the genetic difference that's responsible for pink flowers. So here's the pathway that we saw earlier that produces the blue pigment, cyanidin. And this, as we described before, is regulated by the white gene, which is, produces a transcription factor. But knockouts of white make white flowers. That's in the previous slide. But pink flowers are not produced by mutations here. Instead, they're produced by mutations in the P gene. And that knocks out a catalytic ends, a gene encoding a catalytic end step in the pathway to the blue pigment. And that step being knocked out means that the intermediates are not produced and the blue pigment is not produced. Now, what happens next is parallel to what happens that I described when we talked about phenylketonuria, mutations in the gene for phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now that this part of the pathway is blocked by a mutation in the P gene, the substrate for this enzyme accumulates. It's called dihydrochemferol, not that that matters. And this substrate is converted by a parallel pathway into the bright pink pigment called pelargonidin, which gives the pink morning glories their color. Now, this actually has interesting ecological consequences for morning glories, because the blue normal morning glories are pollinated by bees. So, sorry, I want to write that in white. Bees pollinate these flowers. The mutation that creates pink flowers produces flowers that are pollinated instead by hummingbirds. The white mutation that we talked about before also changes the pollinator status. It just makes the flowers not very attractive to any pollinators, and so these flowers tend to be self-pollinated, which again changes the biology of the plant. So here's a question. What's the genotype of a pink flowered morning glory? Now, oh, I should go back and say, I forgot to emphasize how we write the genotype of these plants. So the genotype of the wild type plant 
is written P plus P plus because it's got a wild type copy of the P allele and the genotype of the pink plant is written P minus P minus because it's got a defective copy of the P allele. Now, we're going to make this more complicated because I'm going to ask you what's the genotype of a pink flowered morning glory. And you might think, well, you already told us the answer, but I only told you part of the answer because now I'm asking you to think not just about its genotype for the P locus, but also its genotype for the W locus. So we're writing the genotype for two genes here. 